In this video, I'll show you how to solve the Alex problem, understanding the effect of pH on the solubility of ionic compounds. For this problem, you'll be given the formula of three ionic compounds, and you'll be asked to predict whether the solubility of the compound changes if the pH of the solution changes. Uh, and the first thing you're going to want to do is either imagine in your head or write out on paper the ions that are formed when each one of these compounds dissociates in solution. So what I'm doing is just writing out the dissociation reactions for each of these compounds. Once you get the dissociation reactions written out, we're going to be analyzing the cations and anions that are produced when each one of these compounds dissociates. Specifically, we're going to be looking for cations or anions that are strong, bas strong bases or strong acids. The only strong base or strong acid that I have among all of these cations is the hydroxide ion. And so far, all of these Alex problems that I've looked at, the only strong acid or strong base that's ever being produced is the hydroxide ion. Of course, there are a ton of problems in Alex's database, so maybe you'll encounter a different type of strong acid or strong base, but so far this is all that I see. Calcium ions are neutral cations, bromide ions are neutral anions, and the copper 2 plus is just a weak acid. So this means that for the CUBR and for the CABR2, because they do not dissociate to form any strong acids or strong bases, the solubility of these substances do not, does not change with pH. So those are no's. For calcium hydroxide, because it does produce a strong base, the solubility of calcium hydroxide is affected by pH. That's the first part of the problem. The second part of the problem asks us to predict where this particular substance is gonna have the highest solubility. You only need to answer this part of the problem if you have checked yes in the first column there. So that means that for these first two, because I checked no, I don't need to do this part of the problem. So the highest solubility question is was a little bit confusing in the way that it was worded to me initially. I thought that it literally meant wet pH would give me the highest solubility. It just means among the three pHs that are provided, eight or seven or six, which of those three pH values would I have the highest solubility of my calcium hydroxide solution? So here's the strategy that you're going to take to solve this problem. High solubility, I'm just going to kind of make a note over here, high solubility that just means that you have a lot of the substance dissolved, which also means that you have a lot that has been dissociated, which means that we want the reaction goes going to the right. So we want the reaction to go this way. So we need to think about Le Chatelier's principle. What could we do to get the reaction to move in this direction? To get the reaction to move in this direction, specifically thinking about pH, so we want to focus on the OH minus. To get the reaction to move in that direction, we want to remove OH minus. There's a lot of ways that we could get the reaction to go this in this direction, but thinking about pH, focusing on OH minus, ignoring calcium, removing OH minus would get the reaction to move in this direction. Removing OH minus means that we're making the solution less basic. which means that we are lowering the pH. So the lower the pH gets, which means that the solution is more acidic, the lower the pH gets, we're making the solution more acidic, we're removing the OH minus, the position of equilibrium is gonna to shift to the left, the calcium hydroxide is going to dissociate. So we wanna pick among these three different pH values, we want to pick the lowest, which in this case is pH six. These problems are pretty tricky. So just try to take it kind of one step at a time. The hard part is gonna be walking yourself through this type of analysis right here.